Welcome, Hudson Valley. This is Connor Walsh, host of In Touch, Town Square Media, the Hudson Valley's award-winning public affairs and issues program. This week on In Touch, we speak with Dr. Albert Riddle, Chief Medical Officer for Hudson Valley Hospice and Hudson Valley Medical Health Choices. Together, we discuss their palliative care services, how it's available to patients young and old, and why it's so important to offer in the Hudson Valley to help patients and their families and caregivers. We invite you to join us and listen to a previously recorded conversation between Dr. Riddle and myself here on In Touch. I'm so proud to announce that In Touch has received another two excellence in broadcasting awards from the New York State Broadcasting Association for 2024. In Touch received the award for Outstanding Public Affairs Program or Series for the second year in a row. Not just that, but In Touch also received the award for Outstanding Editorial slash Commentary. This recognition would not be possible without all of our phenomenal guests that we learn from and grow with every single week. And of course, you the listener. Whether you've been listening for a while or you just found us, thank you for taking part in the conversation and staying in touch with what's going on in the Hudson Valley. Because of the awesome success of In Touch over the last year, we are expanding. We're launching a new spin-off series under the In Touch umbrella called Town Square Spotlight. These spotlights focus on amazing celebrities and leaders passing through the Hudson Valley who are making an impact in pop culture. You can check out our latest spotlights wherever you listen to In Touch. Hello, Hudson Valley. You're listening to another episode of In Touch, Town Square Media, the Hudson Valley's award-winning public affairs and issues program. And we have a great episode lined up for you guys today. Now, we've been speaking with members of Hudson Valley Hospice for a while now, and we've been discussing what hospice means and discussing, you know, well, I guess getting rid of the stigmas around it because so many people had so many ideas of what it wasn't more than what it was. But now we have a whole other section of it to get into today and i'm really excited to break into it with us today we have dr albert riddle chief medical officer for hudson valley hospice in hudson valley medical health choices dr riddle how are you i'm good how are you really happy to have you in here and i know nobody can see right now but you are very well dressed i love the suit very summery at the same time too well thank you very much yeah absolutely no (laughs) very good colors i love it so for those who are unaware of what exactly Hudson Valley Medical Health Choices is. Could you give us like a little brief overview? So Hudson Valley Medical Health Choices came about roughly three years ago, Mm -hmm. and we did it as a sister organization to our hospice organization with the intent to bring a palliative service to this community, which really hasn't had an outpatient palliative service up to the point that we started. And basically what palliative care is is a branch of medicine that deals with people who have chronic illnesses, not necessarily end of life, many of them aren't end of life, yeah. but brings about services to them to help them get along during that time that they're dealing with it. No, that makes a lot of sense. And as we've talked about with hospice before, how that is about end of life and trying to differentiate where certain health services come in. When would this come in? What would be some examples of health issues where palliative care services would have to step in? So one of the things you need to think about is that we have many illnesses that can turn into chronic debilitating illnesses. Yeah, that's fair. Heart failure, uh, emphysema. uh, And so in cases like that where patients have had these illnesses for years, and they've been, over time, getting diagnostic tests and getting changes in medications, a lot of trips to the doctor's office. Over time, that becomes a big burden. Yeah. So after a number of years, it gets to a point of, you know what, I really want to be comfortable, and I want to find a way to, to deal with this a little bit better. So that is the time where you start to switch from this constant medical testing to, hey, what can we do to get my symptoms under better control? And so that is the time where you need to start thinking about a palliative care service because that's our focus. Our focus is less about cure, which in many cases you can't cure heart disease and you can't cure chronic lung disease, but you can put in a higher degree of effort to get those symptoms better so that you're not struggling with those symptoms so much. Absolutely. Try to keep everything at bay and try to make the people dealing with it comfortable. And it also helps out the people around them as well because you have the caregivers, you have the family members. There's so much about that. And there was something that you mentioned earlier. 
the Hudson Valley for many years hasn't had an outpatient caring when it comes to palliative care in this way. For those who haven't had to deal with family members or personal issues when it comes to inpatient and outpatient care, they may not quite understand what those terms mean. So could you give us some examples of inpatient versus outpatient for those who might be confused? So let's say I'm at home and I'll go back to the heart failure case. Mm -hmm. I'm having trouble breathing. My, My body's building up fluids. I'm taking medications to get those fluids out. And at some point, those medications don't work as well. So now I get a buildup of fluids, ultimately severe shortness of breath. I wind up in the emergency room because I just can't deal with this at home any longer. And they admit me to the hospital. I'm there for a couple of days. And while I'm there, there might be palliative care physicians or nurse practitioners in the hospital that can come and see me while I'm an inpatient. And there's a variety of things they can do for me. They can give me tips on ways I can conserve energies or better ways I can rest or better ways I could stay more on top of taking my medications. But then when it's time for me to be discharged back to the community, I'm not going to have that same level of palliative support that I had in the hospital. So that's where we're looking to plug in that gap. When you're at home or maybe you're in a skilled nursing facility or an assisted living facility, We can have you come to us in our office, or we can go to you and help give you that same level of service and support that you had while you're in the hospital. No, that's a great way to break it down, and I appreciate you explaining that. So when it comes to the ways that people are able to help from home or nursing facility or assisted living, whatever it might be, what are some of those ways that Hudson Valley Medical Health Choices helps to alleviate some of those issues within the home. So think about this for a second. You're a patient. Yep. And you go for your checkup. Everything's fine. You're going for a checkup to the doctor's office. You're going to see your doctor or a nurse practitioner, maybe a physician's assistant. If you're not feeling well and now you need to call the doctor to make an extra appointment, you're going to go in and you're going to see that same group of professionals, one of them anyway. Mm. We offer more of a team approach. So now when when you see us, we're going to have that physician or nurse practitioner that's going to assess you, do a physical exam, look at your medication, see how you're doing, and then look at your plan of care and see if that needs revision. But we're also going to have a social worker, and we're going to have other team members, perhaps a nurse or, or others that might be involved, so that we can come up with more of a holistic approach, not just focusing on the medicine, but focusing on the whole being in terms of their care. And you mentioned something earlier around caregivers and family members. They're often forgotten in the typical medical care scenario, but we keep them in mind. We make them part of the process. We're looking after them as much as we're looking after the patient so that we're not just getting the patient as comfortable as possible, We're making things as comfortable as possible for the entire group of loved ones that are involved with that patient. Yeah, absolutely. We've had Lisa Wilson on before talking about caregivers before, and we've definitely talked about that caregiver burnout, and we've talked about how caregivers do get kind of forgotten about in these cases. But here you're saying have this whole approach, and you can't have the whole without the people there caring, whether that is family, friends, or somebody who's brought in. Whatever that might be, it's still a huge undertaking for it's, anybody to take. It's really big. And I'll tell yeah. you, a long time ago, a number of years ago, my parents were both very ill. Mm-hmm. My mother had dementia. We managed to keep her at home with it in an advanced stage for about three years. And her primary caregiver was my father. Wow. And it wasn't until my mother passed away after three years that my brother and I realized that our father had really not been doing well all that time as he struggled to take care of her because our focus was on her. And this is the kind of thing that can get overlooked very easily under standard medical care. If we had had palliative care back then, I'm sure we could have had a much better level of support for him at what turned out to be a very difficult time in his life. And he actually died six months after she did, I think from a broken heart. But but he was not in good shape uh, when she passed away. Wow. Yeah, no, those are the things that you miss out on when you're so focused on 
one thing. You have the blinders on, and you don't quite necessarily see the full picture. And then in his case, yeah, he probably felt some of these issues. But since he was so focused on taking care of your mom, he too had the blinders on. Right. It wasn't necessarily because he didn't realize something was going on, but his energy was so focused elsewhere. And that's something you see all the time with caregivers. Absolutely. Dealing with the person that they're caring about and they don't care for themselves. And even there are times the caregivers will go first, if not shortly after the person, as you said with your dad in that case. It happens way too often. It does. And I think it's really good to know that these services are here in the Hudson Valley available to so many different people. So we've definitely talked about the whys and the who's. But I think it's time that we get into the when's and the where's. Absolutely. So when it comes to when, you think of services like this and you think probably somebody end of life or very much older, but that's not always the case with these chronic diseases. Is that correct? Not, Not at all. And when you think about the when, you know, what would make a person start to think that palliative would be appropriate for them? I would point to looking at your uh, level of communication with your healthcare providers, your doctor's office. Are you calling the doctor's office more? Are you sitting at home with more and more unanswered questions that you'd like to have some answers to? Are you feeling like you're not getting the help that you need? Or maybe you could be doing better with the support services that you have. Are you going to the emergency room more because it's more difficult to keep your symptoms under control? And when you do have the attention of your healthcare provider, are they starting to bring up the possibility of doing certain tests or procedures or, or having you exposed to certain medications where you're thinking to yourself, wow, do I really want to do this? Or do I really understand this? Or do I need time to really explain this a little bit more? Because you know my doctor has a limited limited amount of time, right? And, and, and as a physician, I can tell you on the other end, it is so true that we have such little time to spend with patients that there's not enough time for us to really explain to them what's going on. So we give them the options, but we don't really, in many cases, give them enough to truly understand what those options really mean in terms of the impact that it's going to have on them and their ability to deal with it. No, it is difficult, especially I, I've, I've had so many conversations about this, and especially in a post-pandemic world, the need for medical services has gone up and up and up. And it's to a point where, you know, there's, you know, you have the supply and demand going on here and how many people are able to supply and care and look after all these people. So the fact that you can have palliative care be, in this case, an advocate for these people to help guide them through, not just make them comfortable and help through these procedures and tests and all that, but help understand and direct. So important. So, so important. You don't know what you don't know. You don't. The education side to it is so huge and so important with it. So that just begs me to ask, when you have people like this who they're like, oh, shoot, I am going to the doctors a lot. This is a part of my regular lifestyle. This is a part like this is interfering with my family, my job, my uh, any bit of regular life. And I just want to put this in perspective for people. How young do you see people come in for Hudson Valley Medical Health Choices? What is that range looking like? It's a broad range. So yeah. you obviously are going to have older people that are going to be the higher percentage mm-hmm. uh, that you're seeing with uh, these conditions. But we can certainly have younger people who unfortunately may have had some kind of degenerative neurologic condition uh, where where they could benefit from our services. Uh, We've had people who have had certain, unfortunately, cancers at earlier uh, age uh, where they could use our services. And there's a variety of other illnesses. We even have the uh, possibility with certain conditions to have pediatric patients Mm. uh, that will come in. So there's really no, no limit to the age uh, that we'll have patients come in. I'm really glad that you're able to outline that for us because I think there's a lot of people out there that think it's like, I, I wouldn't count for that. That wouldn't work or that wouldn't count for my family member. Are you kidding me? It's like, that's well down the line. But no, it's, 
you got to know these things and help get the word out on these resources. It's huge. Even if you're not certain about whether or not these services are meant for you, you know, come in and see us. Yes. We'll tell you if they're not. And we'll work with you if you are ready. So, so yeah. keep that in mind. You don't have to make that decision. We can help you with that, too. Amazing. Again, right into the whole advocacy side of all of it. I think that's great. Again, you're listening to In Touch, Town Square Media, the Hudson Valley's award-winning public affairs and issues program, speaking with Dr. Albert Riddle, Chief Medical Officer for Hudson Valley Hospice in Hudson Valley Medical Health Choices. We're trying to talk about, we are talking about palliative care and trying to break it down so that you understand where it is, how it can help you, and it's really not that far off if you are going to the doctors that often or if it's impeding on your regular life. This is something that can help you and be your advocate. Now, we've talked about being able to help out at home. You can help at home, at assisted living, at nursing facility, and we've been talking about the advocacy. So let's kind of bring those two conversations together. When does it get to the point where medical health choices has to come in and say, hey, where you're living right now is not good enough. We do look at the support that the individual has at home, and many of them will have magnificent support systems in place in terms of family members and and other caregivers that can help. We, unfortunately, will have many cases where we have what we call live alones, Mm. where they're totally uh, depending on themselves to provide the care. And those are the people that we can, again, work with to identify for them additional services that can be brought in to help. Visiting nurse or any other type of service that, that you can think of, home health aid, you know, these aren't things that we necessarily would provide for them, mm-hmm. but we could at least point them in the right direction, make the connections for them, and help them understand what services are out there and how they can connect with them. Naturally. Yeah, I think that's great to be able to help guide in that direction. And even when it comes to somebody that has plenty of that support around them, it gets to a point where it's too much for the support around them, right? As well as like, let's say their mobility is shot or something along those lines. It's like you can't carry them around constantly or something like that. We we had a patient recently that fell out of their bed in the Mm -hmm. middle of the night. And the only person there with her was her daughter, who had no ability at all on her own to get her off the floor. So what happens next? She calls 911, and the police has to come, you know, to to help get the patient out of or off the floor back into the bed. Yeah. You know, we deal with these kinds of things all the time. And again, this is why it's important uh, to have us being able to come in, not necessarily, again, just to see the patient, but to think about that overall setup that they have at home. And we can help with those things. Do, does that person need a hospital bed? Does that person potentially need a lift that can get them into that bed? Do they have a chair that's suitable for them, or would they be better in a recliner? You know, these are, again, the holistic things that come about when you take this broad approach and, and really try to help the patient think about not just the medical care, but, but everything that could help them out. Absolutely. Coming at it like that and really having the broadest perspective possible is going to help help diagnose the situation more than just diagnosing the ailment, but diagnosing how you're going to go about working on this. So let's get a little more personal with this one then. On the humanity side of all of it, yeah, you deal with facts and figures and it's like, okay, here's the ailments, here's this, and it can be very black and white sometimes. But I would love to hear about your perspective on the changes that it makes from a very emotional and spiritual and human aspect of it all. What do you see happen for these families and for these individuals when they receive the care that they need? They are so grateful. It is such a relief to know that you have help or someone to lean on, or someone that you can just have listen to you, where you can vent for a few minutes. Um, to, to know that there's going to be someone that has your back as you're going through this difficult time. This is a tough time. Caregivers in these situations, you know, I talked about having to lift someone off the floor that you might not be able to lift. You're probably 
uh, not getting a lot of rest during the day. You might be going out to work during the day. You can't stay there, you know, during those work hours and you're constantly worried about what's happening uh, at, at home. Um, you may not be sleeping at night because that person may be up during the night uh, uncomfortable. You know, I'm giving you some extreme examples now. Yeah. Uh, but, but those extreme cases are where we can help the most in terms of helping you get those services that, that can help during those times. And, and I hate to say you know, this just in terms of bringing hospice into the picture, but one of the things that does happen during time is that with further progression of disease, there does come a time where hospice may fall into the conversation. And we can help you identify that point as well and start to help you transition into that hospice care if that becomes necessary at some point. Yeah, no, absolutely. And of course, we have several other episodes about that. So I definitely uh, tell people to listen to some of those really awesome examples that we have. But you're right. Being able to talk to somebody right there in the moment is like, okay, understand what hospice is and if that transition needs to be made. It's good that it's you guys making those conversations happen because y'all know the best out of anybody in that case. Right. So it's good to be able to get that information from the source. Right. And it's so, so relieving when people go through these things. You know, my family, we've gone through hell and back when it comes to caregiving for multiple members of our family. So when we received a lot of the assistance we had, it, it took the weight off our shoulders and helped make things feel possible. Mm-hmm. And that sounds so much what this is all about here. Again, you're listening to In Touch, Town Square Media, the Hudson Valley's award-winning public affairs and issues program. We're speaking with Dr. Albert Riddle, Chief Medical Officer for Hudson Valley Hospice and Hudson Valley Medical Health Choices. We're talking about when is the best time to reach out and understand what Hudson Valley Medical Health Choices can offer you when it comes to palliative care. And speaking of that, as we're wrapping up this episode, where exactly, or I should rephrase that, What is the range or the reach that Hudson Valley Medical Health Choices has when it comes to people in the Hudson Valley? The Hudson Valley is a very broad region. So what areas, counties are are examples of how far this reach goes? So our main office is located in Poughkeepsie. Mm -hmm. And uh, from that viewpoint, we actually... Uh, we'll have inpatients that'll come in, not inpatients, but outpatients that'll come and see us in the office. Mm -hmm. We'll also make home visits, though, in addition to that. And we'll cover the entire uh, county of Dutchess, in addition to the entire Ulster County area. So it's a pretty broad uh, geographic area that we cover. And so, uh, again, if you can't come to us, we'll be more than happy to come to you. We'll send Mm. a physician, nurse practitioner, our social worker, we'll, we'll bring it all to you uh, if, if that's what's necessary. That lack of mobility is such a big thing because some people get scared. It's like, I can't make it over there or I don't have time to make it over there or things along those lines. So being able to help assist with that, that's huge. Absolutely. So for those who are listening to this now and they think maybe I should have this conversation now or maybe I should have this conversation with one of my loved ones to help get them into the door with this. Where do they go to be able to reach out to get these conversations going? Best start is to give us a call Mm -hmm. to make an appointment. And you can call us at 845-485-2273. And just uh, when they answer, tell them that you'd like to speak with a representative from Medical Health Choices, and they'll put you right through. Terrific. And of course, all the information, contacts, we'll have that in the description of this episode. So you don't have to go very far. We always like keeping it pretty organized over here within touch. That's good. <laughs> but we, and, and no, this has been great. Dr. Riddle, thank you so much for your insight on all of this. Before we wrap up, do you have any last little nugget for the Hudson Valley listening audience when it comes to palliative care as a whole? Just want to close out by saying that we've talked a lot today about chronic illness and people needing help and reaching out and having a shoulder to to lean on. Yeah. But I also want to throw in a positive word of hope Mm -hmm. because there is hope out there for better quality of life and a better opportunity to communicate. And we offer 
that opportunity to you at Medical Health Choices. Beautiful. Thank you for bringing the Hudson Valley so much hope. Thank you. Greatly appreciate it. And again, you can find all the contact information for Hudson Valley Medical Health Choices in the description of this episode. Dr. Riddle, I really appreciate your time. Thank you so much. Thanks for having me. Of course. This has been this week's edition of In Touch, the award-winning public affairs and issues program that runs across Town Square Media, the Hudson Valley radio stations. We want to give a big thank you to Dr. Albert Riddle. For more information, please visit hvhospice.org slash palliative dash care. Of course, all links and information can be found in the description of this episode. Whether you've been listening for a while or you just joined us, thank you. You can find In Touch episodes new and old on your Fan Square Radio Station mobile app. Of course, you can still find all articles and audio under the In Touch tab on this radio station's app and website. And don't forget, we are also on YouTube, Facebook, and Instagram at InTouch underscore HV. I've been your host, Connor Walsh. Until next time, stay curious, keep an open mind, and as always, I'm glad we get to spend some time. 